Oh, look who's here, coming out with their true colors. I always knew you would turn out to be a disappointment. What else can one expect from someone who doesn't even have a father? Not to mention you can't even give me a grandchild yet. Utterly useless. Just do us all a favor and leave my boy alone already, will you? No, I don't want to divorce him. I'm sorry. Christopher's the one who told me to tell you this, though. <laughs> what? Christopher doesn't even want to waste his time talking to you about getting a divorce. He's so fed up with your incompetence that he asked me to handle the conversation on his behalf. You really know how to disappoint, don't you? But Fiona, I don't understand. Oh, believe me. I never wanted Christopher to tie the knot with you in the first place. Everyone knows that kids raised by single moms are destined for failure. It's just common sense. But no, he just had to marry you because you happen to be his type, or whatever nonsense he believes in. I was left with no choice but to reluctantly accept it. Oh, how sweet. You're so desperate for my approval, huh? Just tell me what I need to improve on and I'll do my best. Please. Just please stop with all this divorce talk. I don't do anything... Oh, it's just too late, my dear. Christopher has already moved on to a new girl. Let me tell you, she's a thousand times superior than you in every way imaginable. He's so infatuated that her that he wants to marry her as soon as possible. That's why he asked me, with great pleasure, to kick you to the curb. Tough luck, huh? What? He has a girlfriend? He wants to get married again? What? What about me? Oh, you're just a special kind of stupid, aren't you? It's absolutely hilarious how clueless you were about your husband's infidelity this whole time. <laughs> well, now that you finally know, do us all a favor and just get out of our lives. And let me warn you, don't even think for a second that he'll hesitate to drag you to court. You're in for a rude awakening, my dear. No, please don't do that. Would you really go that far? Well, obviously. How long do you think he's willing to tolerate your presence? constantly dragging him down. It's a wonder he put up with you for as long as he did. You're nothing but dead weight, sweetheart. Christopher won't pick up the phone no matter how many times I tried to call. I don't understand. I thought our relationship was going so well. Oh, he told me he blocked you. <laughs> now, enough of your insistent blabbering. Just do us all a favor and hurry up and leave. Oh, and by the way, my son made it crystal clear that he won't return home until you're out of the picture. How long do you plan to torture him with your presence? It's about time you accept the divorce. Let's face it, you're simply not good enough to be a Robinson. Okay. Good work today, Amy. How are you liking the job? Are you getting used to things? Hello, Bruno. I feel like I'm kind of getting the hang of things. Thanks to you, I really appreciate you hiring me on the spot. I can't thank you enough. It's really helped me a lot. Don't mention it. You're a hard worker, so you're a big help to us, too. You've been through quite a bit, haven't you? That was a terrible story you told me earlier. You still haven't heard from your ex-husband? No, I haven't. I don't think he cares about me anymore. I haven't spoken to him in a month. Seriously? What is this guy's problem? He can't just play with other people's feelings like that. He can't just kick you out of the house because he's tired of you. People wouldn't even do that to a dog, much less a human being. It happened so quickly. I didn't even have a place to stay. I had to ask my cousin if I could stay with her until I found an apartment. I'm glad you could find somewhere to stay. It's bad enough that your husband treated you like that, but his mother too? I'm sorry you had to go through that. That woman was always so hostile towards me. The last thing she said to me was that I wasn't good enough to be a Robinson. Can you believe that? Wait, Robinson? This might be a long shot, but is your ex-husband Christopher Robinson? Well, yeah. Do you know him? Do I know him? He was in my class. Everyone called him Robbie back in the day. You're joking. That's crazy. What are the odds? Which means that you're the one he married through that setup. Setup? What do you mean? You said that he was the one who helped you after you met in that accident, right? Right. He pretty much saved my life. 
So that's why I was able to put up with his mother hating me. Well, that's a huge lie. That was the setup. What does that mean? Whenever he likes a girl, he pays his friend to hit her with his motorcycle, and then he pretends to be the hero and rescues her. That's his usual modus operandi. He was even notorious for it back in school. It's unbelievable that he's still doing it, even though he's grown. What? Are you serious? I can't believe he would do something like that. So, coming to my rescue was all part of some big plan? He knew all along. That's what I think. That guy is literally the worst. He actually almost killed a girl back in high school. Oh my gosh. That's insane. I can't believe you ended up being one of his victims. Plus, he held you all the way into marriage and did the same thing again. He's a giant pile of trash. Hmm. I'm sorry. You must be quite shocked. We can stop talking about it if you want. No, I mean, I am shocked, but also kind of relieved. I feel rather lucky, if I'm honest. Huh? Why? I feel like, thanks to you, I've been able to get through this without feeling too depressed. Even if you didn't know about my situation until recently, your presence always somehow makes me feel better. So, thank you so, so much. I'm glad I could be of any help. You know, I've actually been seeing some similarities between you and I. Similarities like what? I was raised by a single mother, and my marriage fell to pieces too. She broke up with me because she thought being raised by my mother alone meant that I was raised badly. Pretty much the exact same as your situation, now that I think about it. What? But you're such an amazing person. Better than Christopher, at least. Thanks. Though, that's setting the bar kind of low. <laughs> I guess you're right. Sorry. It's fine. I know what you meant. Anyway, we have to live life to the fullest, and we can't let any prejudiced weirdos get in our way. I didn't even know there were people who were so strongly against single-parent homes until I met my ex. I mean, there's millions of single parents raising children. It's a very normal thing, so I don't get it. Right? It's so weird. There's absolutely nothing wrong with single parents. As long as there's love in the home, it shouldn't matter. But yeah, you're right. It's already been a month, so I have to try and forget about it and move on. Being sad about it all the time isn't doing anything for me. That's what I like to hear. Amy, you're a very strong person. Nah. I'm just trying to be. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go walk my dog. Talk to you later. Amy, are you still alive? I'm sorry. Who is this? I don't recognize your number. Oh, it's Fiona. Fiona Robinson? It's been a while, hasn't it? What? Why are you messaging me? I deleted your number. I just wanted to apologize for pressing you and Christopher into your divorce, huh? On a more positive note, I want you to know that if you and Christopher decide to reconcile and remarry, we would be more than happy to welcome you back into our home. You'd be a huge help in looking after my husband. He's gotten quite sick, and I can't do it all myself. You have got to be kidding me. Well, my husband is beside me right now, and he's furious. What? What husband? You heard me. I got married again. You're joking. Who in their right mind would even consider marrying a pathetic street rat like you? With no dad to boast about? I have absolutely no time for your nonsense. So why don't you just hurry up and come back? So you can resume your role as my husband's caretaker. Chop chop. You must be out of your mind. I'd rather die than go back to your family. If you need someone to look after him, you should ask the other woman who Christopher married. As soon as that heartless and foolish woman found out that my husband needed some extra care at home, she wasted no time in packing up and leaving that very same night. Who needs her when I already have you, my sweet daughter-in-law? Good riddance to her, I say. I give her props for that. It seems like she's the only sane person in your entire family. You should consider yourself lucky that we're generous to accept you back into the Robinson family. Despite the fact that you grew up without a father, 
so don't waste any time and get yourself over here. You see, you do have some use after all. I'm sure you must be absolutely honored by the mere thought of it. Oh, and guess what? I even asked Christopher what he thinks about you coming back. And he couldn't care less anymore. How lucky are you? We'll be waiting, but don't take too long, darling. Hold on a second. Did you even read what I just said? I'm starting to wonder if you've got some serious reading issues, or if you're just too wrapped up in yourself to pay attention to a single word I said. Who cares what you have to say? Just shut up and do as I say. Get your sorry self back here immediately. And make sure to inform me when you're finally on your way. Hey, do you intend on making me wait forever? How many times have I told you that you have to come take care of my husband? How many times have I told you that I'm not doing that? Give me a break. I'm never sitting foot in that house as long as I live. What the hell did you just say? You've got some nerve to disrespect the very hand that's been feeding you. Who do you think you are? Whatever happened to that pathetic little girl who was crawling back, begging us to take her in? The one who claimed she'd do anything to come back? That was five years ago, you know? Like I said yesterday, I'm married to someone else. My husband is such a sweet, caring person, and he loves me a lot. We're so perfect for each other. There is no way I would ever leave him, especially not to associate with the likes of you and your son. I don't have a clue where a pathetic little half-orphan like you gets the audacity to spew such disrespectful garbage about your superiors. But don't worry, I'll make sure to give you a lesson in manners that you won't forget. Try it. Come anywhere near me and my husband will protect me. You're married? For real? Seriously? It can't be. Just who in their right mind would ever considering marrying someone as pathetic as you? Only the greatest guy in the world. He's the one who saved me when you wrecked my marriage and I was suddenly left stranded on my own. Plus, he said his mother also raised him by herself. So he knows exactly how I feel. Huh. You expect me to believe you married yet another child with no father? That's absolutely hilarious. It seems like you just settled for the first low life you could find, didn't you? How pathetic. Let me make one thing clear. The person you married doesn't even come close to comparing to my perfect Christopher. They're nothing but a worthless piece of garbage in comparison. I'll agree with you that there is certainly no comparing them. I'm glad you're finally starting to see things clearly. All right then, chop chop. Go divorce the boy and come back home. As I've said before, I am not divorcing my husband. You can read, can't you? What? You said that you can't compare him to Christopher, did you not? You don't need someone like him. Christopher would be a hundred times better than him, I'm sure. You misunderstand me. What I meant was that your scumbag son would never measure up to my husband. There's no use in trying to compare the two. How? How dare you? How dare you insult my precious Christopher? What do you have to say for yourself? He's a piece of trash, and I don't have an ounce of respect for him. He deserves to be alone for the rest of his life. Ha ha. Oh. So you think it's funny to mock him right in front of me? You, the one who had the luxury of growing up without a father. Once you crawl back here, we'll make sure to straighten you out. We'll put you through some rigorous training to transform you into a respectable young lady. Just you wait and see. I've told you a thousand times already. I'm not going back to that house. And don't you ever talk to me again. You're annoying. It took me five years to finally get over the trauma that you caused me. I know you're just here to bring it back up. Why are you bothering me so much? Why are you so desperate to ruin my life? I accepted what all of you did and moved on with my life. I found happiness. Can't you just leave me alone? All I'm saying is, just ditch your husband already. You've done it once, so it should be a piece of cake to do it again. Besides, let's be real. He probably doesn't even want to be stuck with you in the first place. So why waste any more time? If he didn't want to be with me, then why do we have a three-year-old daughter together? Sometimes it's better to just accept defeat, Fiona. Wait, what? You actually had a baby with him? Here I was, thinking you were barren or something because you never bothered to give me a grandchild. 
What a disappointment you are. All right. I think that's enough. This conversation is over. You can't just ignore me. Pick up the damn phone. My wife says she doesn't want to talk to you anymore. Your wife? Yes, this is her husband. Divorce her. That was fast. <laughs> Look who's talking. You pathetic piece of dirt who also grew up without a father, huh? There's absolutely no way my Christopher could ever lose to someone as worthless as you. You're nothing compared to him. It seems as though Robbie's already lost, though. Did you forget about my precious daughter? Huh? Robbie? Is that some kind of nickname? You don't know him. You're such a rude man. I do know him, actually. He was in my class in high school. Wait, a kid who only had one parent? In Christopher's class? Don't tell me. Bruno Hayden? Oh, you know who I am. And my full name at that. Of course. I know all the kids who had bad upbringings. Those with one parent, or those whose parents never went to high school, those whose parents had them as teenagers, and those parents with drinking problems. Who would have thought that a girl would end up marrying you of all people? Ha <laughs> ha! Well, she did. And there's nothing that you or Christopher can do about it. Well, it's irrelevant. Just divorce her already. You don't deserve to be with her. She clearly belongs with Christopher. He had her first, after all. Take your kid and get the hell out of here. I'm afraid I can't do that. And besides, Robbie isn't in any position to marry anyone right now. What? What is that supposed to mean? Robbie and his little accomplice are going to get arrested. Excuse me? There's no reason Christopher would ever be in trouble with the police. He's the most pure-hearted man there is. It sounds like you aren't familiar with your son's true nature. Every time he likes a girl, he hires his friend to hit her with his motorcycle and cause an accident. Then he pretends to be the good Samaritan and rescues the girl, putting her in his favor. That's been his way of doing things since high school. Amy has filed a report to the police. It sounds like Robbie's friend broke down and confessed pretty quickly. So, he's already been arrested. Robbie's next. No! I don't believe it. He's been doing something like that this whole time? Not my precious son. After Amy filed her report, it also seems like all the other women who he's hurt in the past started to file as well. Were there really that many? No. That has got to be a lie. Christopher has never had any trouble getting women. He's always been popular. He's always had women chasing after him. It's all been a setup. He planned everything. He can't even find a woman to like him without doing something as outrageous as that. <laughs> no. My son can't be defeated by someone from a broken home. I can't believe it. I've never felt this humiliated in my life. This is Amy. I just have one more thing I absolutely have to tell you. What now? You can't go around saying that single parent families are bad. It's very close minded. Well, of course they're bad. That's just the hard truth. Your mother and his mother. They've just been living miserable lives. It's absolutely deplorable. My mother is doing just fine, thank you. She has her own business and lives very comfortably. And Bruno's mother remarried a very successful doctor. What? Our mothers are living their best lives right now. Unlike you. <laughs> but even so... Just because a woman is raising a child on her own doesn't mean she isn't doing her best to bring her child up in a loving home. You don't know what people go through in their lives. So you can't just go around judging people based on your narrow-minded assumptions. How? How dare you? Your father probably abandoned your mother, didn't he? He must have walked out on her, leaving her in disgrace. What a shameful and embarrassing situation. Like I said... You shouldn't judge people when you don't know anything about them. My father passed away when I was six. What? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if it was from a drug overdose or something. I mean, what else can you expect from a man coming from a trashy, poor family like yours? It was cancer, you miserable old lady. I barely have any memories of him. But my mom shared so many wonderful stories about him. 
They had a genuine love for each other. And even if he had left, my mom's heart was so full of love that I never felt lacking for a second. Unlike Christopher, I'm pretty sure your screwed up values played a significant role in turning him into a, such a spineless criminal. Meanwhile, his classmate Bruno, who was raised solely by his mother, is on the fast track to becoming an executive in his company. So, so, the Bruno Hayden who never had a father is going to become a company executive. You're lying. There is no way such a thing would happen in real life. Well, sorry to burst your bubble, but I've been telling nothing but the truth. I've also heard that Bruno's stepfather is a lovely person too, and he supports him with all his might. So even if anyone needs a home care, we plan on enrolling in a high-end nursing home. Unbelievable. Your pathetic excuse for life has somehow managed to make a complete 180. How the hell is that even possible? I can't wrap my head around it. Sorry to say, but it's the truth. I hope you finally understand. I'm blocking your number now. Take care and never try to contact me again. I offer my deepest condolences. After that, Christopher and his friend ended up getting arrested for their past crimes. Since he wasn't directly involved in any murders, his sentence was only three years. I guess it's a small silver lining in the midst of all the chaos. With her only son behind bars, Fiona had no choice but to shoulder the responsibility of caring for her ailing husband alone. Sadly, he was diagnosed with dementia, and she's been having an incredibly tough time looking after him. Relying solely on social security wasn't cutting it for her, so she had to juggle taking care of her husband while working a part-time job to make ends meet. Whenever I think about this situation, it sends shivers down my spine. Life can be so unpredictable. You never know what's waiting around the corner. But one thing I firmly believe is that living an honest life can bring happiness regardless of the circumstances we face. If Christopher and I had never divorced, I'm certain I would have taken up the responsibility of caring for him in Fiona's place without complaint. It's just mind-boggling to realize that my entire connection with Christopher was nothing but a deceitful scheme. Yet, I hold on to the belief that honesty and integrity paved the way for true happiness in life.